Well, I just got back from playing a fun game of Age of Sigmar. Got my got my death guys out on the table. Played a nice thousand point game. Uh, brought my coven thrown in, and uh, you know I said I hate breaking my rule and bringing models in when they're not painted yet. But you know I wanted to get some gaming in today, so uh, so we got some playing done. It was a good time. Uh, I got my back end kicked through most of the game. Um, somehow one uh, took the objective because you know that's how the game works. Uh, my friend Mike gave me this cool Ultramarines dice bag, so I was kind of happy about that. Got that sitting up there for you. Uh, listening to, uh, still listening to Sabotage. Been kind of in a been a mood to listen to Sabotage lately. So uh, listening to Gutter Ballet. Probably my favorite record Sabotage ever did. Uh, that's what I've been up to. Uh, let's get back to Coven Throne and let's let's get some painting. Now, where we left off, we've got some gray in there. Uh, again, we're going to add some things to this, but let, let's let's actually start livening this up again a little bit and putting some color in here. Now, I think I'm going to do these in purple, and the main reason I'm going to use purple is. In the Death Army that I've painted so far, I've used purple as the main color. Uh, so, in sticking with the theme of my army, I am going to use a little bit of purple here. Uh, so, let's get a little pur bit of purple out on the palette. And let's see if we can't make this cool. Give me a oh, hand in front of you. Sorry. So, water down this purple just a little bit. Ah, by the way. Great color, one of my favorite. Game color, Hex Legion, right here. What a great color, one of my favorite game colors I've ever bought. Um, I've probably told you guys in other videos, um, I like Vallejo paint sometimes, I don't like them others. I definitely like the squeeze bottle, but this one, man, that's a great color. One of my absolute favorites to use. Uh, I love the way it works, I love the way it looks. So, let's move that out of the way. Let's get a little bit of color on this guy, why don't we do that? So, I'm going to come through here. Oh, yeah. That's the consistency we want. Right there. It's thick enough so it'll stick. Thin enough that it won't clog. That's what we like. Now, I'm going to go over these things up here. But for now, we're going to put purple down. Oh, that looks cool. Already getting a little bit of color in this model. I like it. Um... Right now, when you look at this model, you're going to see something that looks mostly gray, mostly dark. When we're done with this. I really want to brighten this guy up. Um, I know playing death would make you think that our models are going to be dark. But sometimes, that's one thing that's fun about playing undead, is we can really get in here and use some purples. Um, something that kind of made me think about undead to begin with, from the beginning... Undead, death, whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, I painted a lot. I probably said this before, but that's okay. I painted a lot of uh, Space Wolves. And I love Space Wolves. They're fun to play. Um, they're definitely the 40K army for me. But sometimes you want a different color palette. Now, uh, you know, the Seraphim, if you really want some bright colors, that's the way to go. But I kind of like, with death models, I like that we can put some bright colors in here. But when we put bright colors in with death, they typically are bright colors for a contrast. Less, It's less likely that I'm going to have a super bright model all the way across. Much more likely that I'm going to have a dark, grim-looking model with some really cool bright colors. Man, look at that purple. It just it just pops, it just sticks out. I love this color. Um I, I mean, I'm a big fan of purple anyway. Uh as a color, but I love this one and I love how it looks on models. And we're going to get it all in through here. You know, again, this little guy here in the middle, eh, I'm probably going to get a little bit of purple on him, and that's okay, but I'm going to end up putting a different color over that. I don't know what yet. Um, 
You know, when I'm done with the video, I'll put what colors I use in the description. But for now, I, I really don't know. Told you, I uh, I planned this out uh, only a little bit. Something like this is not a model that I feel needs to fit a certain look. Um, I just want it to look cool, and I want this model to pop. This is a model that when I take it out on the out on the table, I want it to. I want it to look cool, you know. I want someone to, um, I want someone to look at it. Let me actually raise this up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better. So, I just want this to. I want this to really pop. I want people to see it from across the room. Um, again, sometimes it's not about being the greatest artist because I'm certainly not. I don't have great technique. I'm not a great painter at all. But sometimes it's just about making models look cool. Um, you know, I love playing. I love playing Age of Sigmar. I love playing 40k. But there's so much more to it than just rolling dice and winning objectives and that sort of thing. And you know, I when I said today I won, that's actually not common. I'm by no means a good player. I typically play the game and then when I'm done, I go, oh, you know, I learned a lot. But you know, I. I, I had some other friends of mine ask me recently, like, you know, 40K really can't be that great of a game. It really can't, or Age of Sigmar or whatever, can't be that great of a game. And I've thought about this lately. I've, I've spent a lot of time thinking, like, why, what is it about Warhammer that is just more fun than other games? And there's a lot of answers for it. Um, one answer for it is that it's so, there are so many possibilities. You know, just because, you know, if we're playing a thousand point Age of Sigmar army, um, I mean, my friends and I that are playing, we talked before we went, we all said this is what we're, um, this is what we're bringing, this is what we're using, um, and that's okay. But none of us knew, or, you know, it's, it's very unlikely that you're going to play anybody with the same list as you with the same models using the same thing so there's just so many different options and you know you can only prepare so much you know i can only learn so much about playing a different alliance and also you know, and so there's lots of things i love about it but i think at the end of the day i i, I love i love the ownership of a of an army in warhammer and, you know, magic players might say, well, these are my cards. I bought them. I collected them. It's very true. And say, well, this is my deck. I put it together. And, you know, that's, that's very true. I'm not disagreeing with you. When I play Warhammer and I say this is my army, I feel like this is literally my army. I, because I built it. I designed it. I made it. Um, it's... I feel very, feel very connected to it. I do. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pause. Again, we're going to get these all nice and purple, and then we'll come back and we'll move on a little bit. Hang on. Well, now that I got the purple done, I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, I really like that. I think the purple looks pretty cool. Uh, the other thing I did while I was waiting for the paint to dry was I came up here and I added that khaki color up here to where the rest of those bones are. Um, you know, it's one thing I do, uh, especially when I don't have exactly a, a tight plan, is sometimes I end up saying, oh, look, I, I meant to color that earlier and should have, so I did that while the paint was drying. Um, next couple of things we're going to do is I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to paint all these pillows, and I'm thinking I'm going to paint the pillows uh, blue uh, for no reason other than sounds like it might look cool. So I'm going to use another color I really like, uh, this would be your dark Prussian blue. Uh, it's a model color. It's just a color I bought a long time ago. I kind of like it. Um, it's very much like the ultramarines blue if you want to use a GW color. Uh, but I'm a big fan of this color here. So I'm going to go ahead and paint all these pillows with that color. Now, I'm going to end up coming around with gold and doing gold trim around these pillows. And I am going to paint... Uh, that skeleton there, the khaki color, like I do everything else. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and...
do that in blue. And you know, again, I, I, I've said this before, I use a wet palette for a lot of things. Um, I just need to uh, kind of make my wet palette again. So right now I'm being a little bit lazy. Uh, that's all right. So we're gonna take a little bit of this blue here, uh, get some down here on my palette. This color is kind of cool. I, I really like it. Um, I said, uh, I personally think that, um, the Vallejo colors are a little hit or miss, but these ones, uh, this color specifically, I'm a big fan of. Um, and it's a, it's a model color that they sell. Um, I have it because when I first started buying paints, um, the very first thing I did was go out and buy the cheapest acrylics I could find. Next thing I did was I went to whatever I could find um, at my local Hobby Lobby or Michael's. And they didn't carry the game colors, but I was able to get some, or they, they, I was able to buy some of those model colors. And when I bought them, I was able to get most of them 40% off because I bought them one at a time. And that ended up being pretty cool. Saved me a bunch of money. And, you know, one of my themes on here is that, you know, there's a lot of things. The models cost a lot of money as it is. Let's not spend more than we need to. Now, this is another situation where it would have been really cool had I done this before I glued it on here. But, as I said, I didn't exactly have a plan for this guy. Um, I'm happy that I was smart enough to not paint the vampires that goes on here. But, it, um, I didn't think to paint these pillows. So, alright, I'm going to go ahead and paint these pillows. This blue color. And... Nothing crazy here. Just thin down a little bit of that dark Prussian blue. Let's see. Yeah, I kind of dig it. So anyway, let me go ahead and finish those up, and I'll be right back. All right. Well, that blue is uh, that blue is going to be drying now. And again, it's kind of hard to see at the moment, but we are going to light it up, lighten it up, and put some gold and some uh, other stuff in there. So right now, I'm going to let that go ahead and dry. And I'm thinking I might hit up. Uh, that section there. So let's pick out a good color and see what might work. I was kind of thinking maybe we might do one of these or maybe we could do the same gold color we're gonna put on the inside. Why don't we do that? Let's do the same gold color we're gonna put on there. So let me grab some gold. Okay, I've got uh, another model color. This is, let's see if I can focus that for you. This is model color Old Gold. Another one of the colors that I bought 40% uh, off. And this works pretty well. I don't use this color uh, too much because it's oftentimes way too light to get it to uh, stand out. Um, I use more brass color than I use gold. But in this situation, it's probably going to work pretty well. So why don't we, uh, as usual, we're going to... Uh, take some of this and we gave it a good shake already and we're going to use a thinner medium as usual. This is a metallic, so we're going to use some thinner medium. And a couple of drops right there. We're going to give it a good, a good mix. Get this nice and thinned out and we should have gold working pretty well. This gold will stand out real nice. At least it should. At least we hope it does. It should stand out quite nicely against this purple. Let's take a look and see if I'm right or wrong. If I'm wrong, we'll add something else. Nope. Yeah, that's going to stand out pretty nicely. So, I have way too much paint on my brush. So, actually, let's get a little brush. And... Let's get some gold right there. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, I need, I'm gonna go ahead and add the gold there and I'm gonna put some gold trim right around these guys. Hang out, we'll be right back. All right. 
Right, let's focus this. That's what it looks like with the gold. I think it looks pretty cool. I really like that. Uh, next two things we're going to do are uh, on this video. We're going to come in here and I'm going to put khaki on that skull up there and all the skulls in here. Now, um, the skulls are not going to stay a khaki color. Uh, well, they are, they're going to, uh, that's a base color for what we're going to add to later. And actually I need a smaller brush than that. Let's use the same little brush that we just used. Um, so we're going to take a little bit of this khaki color again. Khaki. We're going to come in and we're going to add that to that skull there. Now, the way I do uh, skeletons and skulls, and you'll see it's how I've done all the skeletons on here, is I started off in this khaki color. I put a wash over top, and then I put a highlight color in there. But we'll get there. I don't know if we've done that in any of the videos before or not. We will get there. Okay, so we got that skull nice and nice and khaki for now. All right, that skull's in there. Now let's go ahead and get all the ones that are in there. Um. It's not going to be the most visible once we get to it later, but it would be silly not to color these. So we'll come in here and get those skulls. As soon as I'm done with the skulls, go in there and get the roses. So we'll be right back. Let me get these skulls. All right, I'm back. You see, we... Uh, I got some color in those skulls. Now remember, uh, we're gonna add more color on top of those. That's just the khaki base color. Next up, uh, we're gonna go in, I'm gonna do those vines with flat green. This is a another Vallejo model color. Same method as before. Give it a good shake. We're not gonna need a ton. Now, I'm gonna use a, the smallest liner brush I have, but I never mix paint with a small brush. I always, or I never water it down with a small brush like that. I always use a slightly larger brush. Um, tends to just work a lot better. Uh, might have thinned it a little bit too much. Not a big deal. Give it another drop. Yeah, that's what we want. All right, so same as last time. Get some of that here. What I'm gonna do is go through and add green to anything here that looks like a vine. Gotta, I have to admit, this is one of the more difficult things I've done. Um, so we'll go through here, put green on all these vines. Back. Okay, last step on this video. I'm going to take some flat red, um, any color of red will do, and I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of red on those roses in there. Now, uh, if I were doing roses that were going to be a little bit more visible, I would probably go through and add some highlight colors, add some layers, add a wash, do a few things. Uh, in this situation, I'm not really going to do that because the vampire ladies that are going to sit on there are going to be in the way and you won't be able to see it uh, very well. So today, all we're going to do is add a little bit of red. Shouldn't be a big deal. Let's clean our brush a little bit.
again. We're going to mix this red up a little bit. A little bit of water. Thin it down just a little bit. Make it easier to work with. Uh, there we go. Okay. Final, final thing we're doing on this video. Taking a little bit of that red. Getting in here and adding it to these roses. Be right back, show you what it looks like when these are all done. And that's it. We got a little bit of red in there, some green. Again, they don't look perfect right now, but uh, once we add some shadows and once we get our vampires in the way, I think it'll look a lot better. Uh, just like my, my old managers when I worked in restaurants used to say to clean as you go. Uh, when I paint, I kind of clean up as I go. I don't worry about something being perfect because I'm just going to put more layers on top and change it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this uh, next episode of adding some color to the Coven Throne. We'll be back with more episodes where we continue some more painting. Keep on painting.